<laughs> Hi guys, Bernie here from sunny San Diego with our latest Freedom Cast. And this time we are going to show you how to install Redmine on your Ansel. And Redmine is a project management tool, also called a trouble ticketing tool, issue management tool, project management tool. So if you know Jira, for example, it's quite similar, but Redmine is completely open source and completely free. Yeah, I'm gonna show you how it looks like. So here I have it installed already. And you see it's HTTPS redmine.silk.ansel.us. And the ansel.us, those are our domain names for the instant SSL. So you get those domain names for free from us with instant SSL. Um, which you see here so it's all secure and <clears throat> and silk is the name of my Ansel um, that I'm using and Redmine is the name of the ant LUT so I can just append that and automatically have my SSL here so I navigated to redmine.silk.ansel.us log in and I can log into my Redmine installation here and then I'm up and running. Um, you see here I have projects, I have issues, I can do time tracking, I have all the administration here, and I can have as many projects, as many users as I want, and it's all free. All you need is your server running um, Antman, and you can create your instance and run Redmine in it. So we feel that is quite awesome. So I'll show you on another Redmine installation. It's called Brainosaur. So we have our stuff in here. So this is the home page. You see the latest news here. So you can publish news so you can work together in a team. Um, even do wikis for your team, things like that. So we have a lot of projects here. Um, so let's just do one of the projects here just to show you something. So then this is the project called Anthill. We have 53 features, seven defects, 15 tasks. You see how many are closed, how many total. Um, you see the latest activity here. You see the roadmap for future releases. You see all your issues here, which are the actual tickets, as I like to call them. So um, you see some some ticket here, you can just click on it, you can edit it, you can append to the status, we see how many percent done, all these type of things. You can see the log, how much time was spent on it. You see a Gantt chart um, with all the tasks and uh, you have a calendar, you have news um, that you can publish about the project. You can upload documents and share documents. You have a wiki per project. You have forms. You can upload files and you have the settings here. So it's a really full blown project management system and that you can do that for each and every of the projects here. As you see, I have like a dozen projects or something here in my installation. You can go to the administration and you see I have lots of users in here, right? So if you do that with Jira, it's quite cheap for up to 10 users, but hey, it's very fast that you um, have more than that. So you get a lot of users and, and this is all free with Redmine. You have roles and permissions here. Um, you have different trackers that have different workflows and issue statuses. And hey, Redmine is, is an amazing tool. Um, it's very popular and it's easy to install on an Ansel. And I'm gonna show you that in an instance. So as you saw in the, uh, in the domain name, it's all running on, on an Ansel uh, named Silk. So um, we can just log in to Silk here. So this is our Ansel uh, named Silk. Um, we have a few antlets in here and one of which is, is Redmine. Um, it is uh, based off of uh, Debian 10. And um, as you see uh, here, it has, it has a complete Redmine system. So we could, we could add 
um, just add a new project. We go administration projects and then and then we can add a new project here. And yeah, we could go through all of this. And I showed you this in the in the already populated version um, right here. So um, the purpose of this Freedom Cast is to show you how easy it is to install it on your Ansel. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just stopping this and um, deleting it and then doing it all from scratch again. Boom, I delete my Redmine instance. I'll have to type the name just to be sure. And it's deleted. So now let's create a new Antlet. Let's call it uh, Redmine again. Um, let's make it based off of the Debian 10 Antlet here. Um, let's give it a little bit of RAM, like four gigs, and let's give it two vCPUs. The IP is already pre-populated, so all we need to do is create Antlet, and, um, and then we're there. All right. So that was that part. So now I'm going to show you how, uh, how we can install it, right? So we're SSHing into Silk. And then from Silk, we're SSHing into 10.1.1.14. That was the IP address that we gave it. Oh, it's not started, so SSH won't work if we won't start the antlet, right? So this is the the Redmine antlet. Let's start it. So let's SSH into it. Takes a while. And uh, all right, we are in our antlet. So it's a Debian, so the first thing we always do is an apt-get update to just update the repositories. Boom, we're done. And then we do an apt-get upgrade to upgrade it to the latest Debian version. And then here in the browser, we go to redmine org um, to get the install page all right so it asked me if I really want to upgrade I'll do that and then in the meantime let's check the browser for the install page so what it's saying is the latest Redmine version and you know this is a snapshot in time so don't expect me to update this video all the time when new versions come out so that's why I'm showing you it's redmine.org under redmine.org you find the install the wiki page how to install it so currently the current version is 4.1 and it supports Ruby versions 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, and it uses Rails version 5.2. So if you do it someday in the future, it might be 4.2 or Redmine or something, and you have different versions here. So you need to adapt all that, right? So um, right now, um, my, um, my uh, Debian is updated, so I have all that. Um, the next thing we need to do is install um, Ruby and some other stuff. So what we're going to do here is install a few things. <clears throat> we install, and i show you that in the terminal. <clears throat> so we install Ruby full, which gives us <clears throat> the latest Ruby version. We need build essential um, to install the C compiler and stuff because uh, we need that. We need zlib 1g dev. We need libpq. We need sqlite, wget, and image magic. So let's just hit enter 
and install all of that. <clears throat> so those are the dependencies that we need to, uh, to install Redmine. So that's running, it takes a little bit of time. So then um, we also need a database system. It works with, with MySQL, but actually the Redmine guys um, recommend Postgres because there's known issues with, with MySQL. You could also use Microsoft SQL Server if you want. Um, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it with Postgres, which is kind of the best choice if you wanna run Redmine. So, and Postgres um, server needs actually be installed after we've we've run through the install process here, um, which is still running. So just to give you a little bit of a of a heads up, we install Postgres, we create the Postgres user, then we create the database um, connection and then basically install all the dependencies and uh, then we should be good to go. So it's actually not, it's, it's, it's a quite straightforward process. So we've installed everything now here. We can do Ruby-V to see we have Ruby 2.5. Um, that's good, that's one of the supported versions. Um, so let's install Um, Postgres QL as well so that we have our database system um, so that's running now So in the meantime, let's look again at the browser here. Um, so here, this is again the wiki page of, of Redmine. It shows us how to install everything. And here they have the two commands that we're gonna run in, in Postgres in order to create the user and create the database. So I'll just copy that over and then go back to the terminal all right so now i have postgres running i do an su command super user uh, into the postgres user because that's the um that's the you know the the super user for postgres and then we say psql which is the command line interface for postgres and then we can actually run those two commands that I just copied over. Um, so that was it. And just hit Control D to leave the PSQL and then hit another Control D to leave the SU command. So um, database and user um, is created. So that's all great. Um, let me see what else we need to we need to install. Um, we need to install um, Rails, right? So we have installed Ruby, but we need to do a gem. The the gem is the the package manager for Ruby, and it comes with Ruby. So we've already installed Ruby. Um, so we need to gem install Rails, and we want it in version 5.2.0 because that's the version that the current Redmine uh, version is using. So let's do that. Um, it also takes a while and here you see it says building native extensions. So that means it needs some needs to compile some C extensions to make the Ruby and Ruby on Rails thing fast. So that's why we needed to install the build essentials um, in the very top. Um, and, and that building here and that compilation, that takes a while. But then after that, 
um, we have rails installed, uh, Ruby on rails. So then after that, we just need to download the actual Redmine um, installation. And I'm gonna show you that um, here again. So here it says, installation procedure, Redmine application, go to the download page, right? So let's do the download page is right here and then we download the redmine 411.tar.gz and what i'm doing here in the browser is i just right click it and say copy link location so that's the lingo of firefox so if you use a different browser sometimes it just says copy link or something like that uh, firefox calls it copy link location so i'm going to do that i copied just this link here and um, now let's go back to our terminal window. Let's see what's going on here. Um, it's still installing Rails, but it should be done quite soon. And um, after we have Rails, then actually, um, yeah, we're done right now. So now we do a wget, and then I just hit Command V, or on Windows it would be Control V, to get this link location that we just copied from the browser, right? So I'm just downloading this tar.gz file that contains the actual Redmine one, and then we just use tar um, xf and then this file that we just downloaded um, it's right here so that unpacks it so that was quick um, so we have that directory now so we can cd into that directory now and we have some files in there that's great so we need to go to the config directory okay here we go and um, then um, let's go back to the browser real quick so here we uh, we we installed the database and blah 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 so now the next thing is the database connection configuration and the guide set tells us copy the config database.yml.example to config slash database.yml. So we'll do that and then we'll edit the file. So we say cp um, database.config, no database.yml.example, and we copy that to database.yml. And then I'm going to use Vim as my editor, so it's, you might want to use Nano or something like that. Um, I'm just a Vim person, so I'll use this. And then what you see here is it says MySQL, so we replace that with PostgreSQL. And the database is Redmine, the host is localhost, the username is Postgres. And, um, and the password is, in this case, um, my password, right? That's what we copied from the guide. So it's my password. So if you do it on your own, select a different one, okay? <laughs> and, um, and it's got, just got to be UDF8 for... Um, for Postgres and um, we can do the same thing here now for development uh, yep. and then and then uh, do the my password again Right, and do the same thing down here.
for the test environment. And do it all UTF-8 instead of that UTF-8 and before. Alrighty, so this looks good. Saving the file. So we've created the database connection now. That's good. Um, so now we need to install the dependencies. So the way that works is, first of all, we go back here into the main directory. Uh, now we saw it say get gem install bundler. So bundler is that, uh, yeah, package management system for Rails. Um, so bundler is here now. And then we can say bundle install. Oh, first of all, we need to say bundler config set without and then we say development test so we just do it without the development and test environment because we only want the production environment in our case so then all we need to do is say bundle install and that will then install all the dependencies for our little project, um, for our Redmine project. So that's running for a while. And um, and then after that, um, we've actually come a long way. I'll let this finish. All right, ah, bundle install is done. So um, what we're gonna do now is create a, um, I'll show you the terminal by the way. So I was showing you the wrong window. So let's just get back what, what I did here. So yeah. I, uh, I said gem install bundler, bundler config set without development test. I said bundle install. So this did all this. And then, um, and then we have the bundle install done. So the next step is to create a file named gemfile.local. And here we load a gem named Puma, which is our, um, you know, a web server, our Ruby based web server. And um, we also want that in a specific version in this case. And it's going to be, um, it's going to be 3.7 in this case. All right. So what we need to do now is to generate the secret token. So we say bundle exec rake and then generate secret token. Do another bundle install because we added that Puma thing. So we need to bundle install again. So now Puma will be installed. We wanted at least 3.7, so it gave us um, it gave us 3.12 here, as you see here. So all right. So now we can do the bundle exec rake again to generate the secret token. So that has run. So now we need to create the, to populate the database. So we can copy that line from the browser window again and just paste it here. So we say rails env equals production. So we want to execute that in the production environment. And we say bundle exec rake db.migrate, which will create the database schema. All right, so that's done. 
um, then then we want to load the default data set so we need some populate the database with some default data so this is how that works a bundle exec a rake redmine colon load default data and uh, we use uh, we use en for english right okay oh now the password authentication failed for user postgres so let's see if we did everything correctly in the database.yml file um, we said my underscore password so that is actually it should be the correct path it should be the correct password my underscore um, password oh you know what the database user um, I made it I made it Postgres here but it's actually Redmine <laughs> all right so this must be Redmine here Okay, so now what we need to do is run the DB migrate again. Okay, so that's creating all the tables and the schema. And now we can load the default data again. We do it in English. Boom, default data loaded. Okay, so that was easy, and um, yeah, we should uh, we should actually be okay. So the only thing I'm doing now is uh, bundle exec. Puma, which is our application server, and we sa say dash D for demonize, so we want to run it in the background as a daemon, um, and uh, then we say mm. well, let's see bundle exec puma dash h for help so let's see how puma works um it's dash d for demonize dash e is for the environment and dash p is the port so that's all there is so we just say demonize and environment is production and then we say port is 80 so that it will run on port 80 so we just hit that and um, and it's running. So now with our with our instant SSL, which I have been showing you in a in a separate video, um, you can basically go to Ant Hill, and uh, that's our our you know customer management system, and there you can set up instant SSL and and that domain name. For your Ansel, right? In my case, I've set up silk.ansel.us for my Ansel here. That is called Silk, and and now I'm in the Redmine Antlet. So the Antlet is named Redmine, and I'll show you that here. So um, the Antlet's name is Redmine. So automatically, it makes that available. Redmine.silk.ansel.us and I can just reload it here and uh, and boom we're there and you see it looks different because it has a different theme now the theme you saw before was was a custom theme um, this one is like when Redmine comes out of the box and it has admin the login is admin and the password is admin as well 
and um, you can just log in. Um, boom, that's it. And, and it wants a new password, so I'll type the old one and type the new one. And apply. So here we go. And, uh, and you see your red mine, right? You can now create new users, you have the administration and everything. And, and it's running locally on my Ansel. I can create hundreds of projects and users and everything. Um, swap the theme to the one that you've seen before. And, and it all runs uh, for free. And it doesn't take m many resources, right? Even if you have 100 users, chances are they're all not hitting the enter key at the same time, right? There's probably minutes between clicks and everything. So, uh, I mean, a Redmine installation, even with 100 users, it will only add like 5%, 10% CPU utilization um, to your Ansel, if at all. So you have lots of other stuff there to um, create more antlets on, on your Ansel and that's why it's such a great investment and it really helps um, getting all the stuff installed on, on, on your own little data center. All right, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and um, yeah, leave me, um, leave me a like for the YouTube algorithm. Uh, it helps me a lot, so um, thanks in advance and uh, subscribe to our channel and see you next time. Bye.